Good day and welcome to this segment of Focus On with myself, Nastasia Arantza. Fostering economic growth through digitalization can create opportunities for inclusion and financial stability when done right. The revolution of digitalization saw an increase in online platforms like e-commerce, but also the need for online safety. Visa is positioning themselves as a driving force behind digital transformation and economic prosperity in Sub-Saharan Africa. And joining me today to walk us through their solutions and commitment to empowering individuals, businesses, and communities is Vinesh Ramnarayan, who is the Vice President for Product and Solutions for Sub-Saharan Africa at Visa. Vinesh, thank you so much for your time. In my intro, I mentioned this rise of e-commerce. So let's talk about how Visa is making that experience better, not just for businesses and consumers, but also taking into account the safety element. Sure, thank you, Nastasia. Um, I mean, when we look at you know e-commerce, as you rightly mentioned, we we continue to see double-digit growth, and consumers are continuing to be you know very comfortable with their online shopping experience. In in some of our markets, we're seeing in excess of thirty percent growth. But but one thing is constant is that technology continues to drive you know real impact to people's lives. And the mobile phone has been one of those instrumental uh, technologies that have been driving innovation across the region. We've seen, you know, the pace of change is quite rapid, where we see it at different stages in different markets. But, you know, you can't even imagine leaving the house today without your mobile phone. You can leave your wallet or your handbag behind, but not your mobile phone. But Visa is continuing to play a very significant role in shaping digital payments across the region. What Visa has been doing over the last couple of years is trying to replicate the journey that you experience in the physical uh, experience in the digital experience, uh, online that is. So, and consumers are becoming more uh, demanding. They want seamless experiences, but they want the satisfaction and the reassurance that this transaction is actually safe. Now, in the online environment, the inability to know that it's you uh, has given rise to friction and fraud. And as a result, for solving for that digital identity, it's removed some of that really nice experience that you could get on online shopping and move towards more managing risk. Now, you've got to be, uh, and you've got to balance that risk so you don't get consumers you know, abandoning their cards because the online experience is really bad. So, so that journey over the last couple of years has started uh, uh, with Visa and a lot of our partners. And, We've been spending a lot of time with uh, the local gateways and the you know, global gateways. Now, gateways are key participants in the payments ecosystem because generally they process online transactions. Now, the, the journey started with you know, tokenization. And what tokenization basically is, it's the ability to remove a card number from that transaction and replacing it to a with a token. Now, what this means is, say, for example, you're making a transaction, you're paying for your Netflix subscription. Okay. Now, when that transaction happens, there's no card details, card numbers being exchanged, a token is being exchanged. Now, when that token gets exchanged, and say, for instance, somebody wants to make a payment for a, their Disney subscription, you cannot use that same token. It won't work. Now, each token requester, as we call it, gets an individual token. So it makes it a little bit more safe and secure. And tokenization is a very foundational uh technology, and it's also used in the global pay. So when you tap your Apple Pay or your Samsung Pay or your Google, it's a similar technology. Now, what we've been doing to take it one step further is, you know, how do we make sure that we can authenticate you online? So the first thing that Visa has been working on, there's two solutions actually, that over the next 12 months will be released. And the first is click to pay Now, click to pay is basically having an online wallet. So all your credentials can be in there, you enter it once, you register, and when you make an online purchase, you just select it from click to pay. Now, the second part of uh, uh, the online experience is how do we authenticate you quite seamlessly? Now, most of us know today when you do an online transaction, we use what we call 3DS, okay? Now, what that means is you get a, a pin, and that pin basically you enter it during the transaction process, and then your transaction can happen. Now, there's a new service that uh, Visa is launching. It's called Visa Payment Passkeys. 
Now, payment pass keys, instead of getting a pen, you can use your biometrics, whether it's your uh, facial recognition, your fingerprints, to actually authenticate that transaction, and the transaction can actually happen. Now, you can imagine that makes it a lot more safer and secure without compromising too much on the, the experience. And payment pass keys, just as one last point on that, it uses what we call fast identity online standards. It's a standard that's been developed over the last couple of years. And Visa and some large organizations have been part of that journey. An initial use case was to replace username and passwords. If you take your mobile phone, you've already got your biometrics into the phone. So registration and the use of it becomes a lot more easier for a consumer. So you're making sure the journey on their online experience is safe and secure and you're not compromising on experience with click to pay for example. So let's talk about uh, financial inclusion and also the use of uh, cash. I think oftentimes when we talk about this digitization strategy or journey when it relates to you know, payments, et cetera, the element of financial inclusion comes in and we also talk about these sort of cash heavy segments. How are you thinking about opportunities and also partnerships to be able to digitize aspects of the journey that are quite cash heavy? Yeah, I mean, cash is still pretty much prevalent in many of the countries across sub-Saharan Africa. And we look at look at the region as a whole, about 80% of transactions generally occurs in cash. And, and this varies between different countries. Some countries it's higher, some countries it's lower. But but one of the, the, the main changes that's driving, uh, you know, change in payments that is, and I mentioned it before, was the mobile phone. Now you couple that with contactless. Now, contactless is the ability to tap and pay. So together, those two technologies uh, you know, has really driven change within the payment industry over the last couple of years. Now, the second part of this is you know, as urbanization accelerates across the globe, the importance and reliable, secure and convenient transit systems cannot be overstated. And, and Visa has been playing quite a pivotal role at the forefront of these advancements. Now, in order to... Uh, displace cash in various ecosystems, you have to look at those segments, and like you mentioned, that are cash heavy. And one of them is transportation. Now this journey started around uh, 2018, together with the Caltrain Management Agency, the Public Transport Operator and NetBank, for instance, where the Caltrain, for example, was initially closed loop. So you would go to the Caltrain, you would purchase a card, a Caltrain card, you would load that with funds, and then basically tap for your ride. Now, generally you have long queues, you need to get the car, the experience is not you know, what you would want. You just wanna tap and get onto the train. So Visa together with these partners basically made that open loop. So now approximately 55,000 commuters that use the car train daily can now just tap their bank cards and actually ride the, the car train. So that, that actually marked the first mass transit transaction in sub-Saharan Africa. Now, building on that success over the last year or so, uh, we've extended that influence into the taxi industry. And you know, majority of our consumers uh, today use the taxi industry. And in collaboration with some partners like, uh, and FinTechs like Loop, SAP, Wax Mobile, we've been looking at solutions of how can we digitize payments within the cash, within the taxi industry. And we've started that journey already. And one of the technologies that some of these partners have used is what we call tap to phone, where your mobile phone actually becomes an acceptance device. So some taxi drivers or their conductors can now use a mobile phone and, can, and riders can actually tap their bank cards and actually pay for those, those journeys. Now, now, when you look at this, it's, it's, just be, it's more than just about you know, paying for that that transaction when you, when you ride that uh, public transportation, it's actually driving financial inclusion as well because we've got solutions like you know, Visa prepaid pre or Visa private label where you, know, you can get uh, consumers now can uh, you know, get a bank account to actually pay for their, their rides on their public transportation. So we've been doing a lot of work around you know, uh, urban mobility and how do we transform that. But one additional solution that we're building you know, to drive financial inclusion, because we understand that a lot of uh, consumers out there, you know, millions of them are unbanked or underbanked. So how do you drive financial inclusion in that segment as well? So we're building capability 
with our banking partners and fintechs to allow consumers to open a bank account and have the ability to send and receive money. And we're also looking at how do we expand that capability and if they have a smartphone to be able to tap and pay from that as well. So that's going to really drive uh, financial inclusion, displace cash within economies and drive uh, you know, digital payments uh, within those economies. Speaking of payments, do you find that uh, consumers are worried about credit cards? And if that is the case, then what kind of solutions are you rolling out to sort of allow people to split their payments? Like, uh, let's call it visa installment, so to speak. Consumers are, you know, they're looking for alternatives to credit and micro loans. Uh, con consumers want credit but they don't want to be in what we call forever credit, you know, where they can't come out of that, you know, that uh, credit agreement because they've got to pay their installments and carry on. So, and what we find is most consumers are afraid of credit. And as a result, they're unable to make, you know, those large purchases that they may need to make, you know, for example, uh, you know, purchasing uh, to repair your car or to make home improvements, you know, so some of those large purchases, so, but, but consumers want to make those large purchases, but they want to have a specific period of time in which they can pay it off, but also transparency, because transparency is very important to, you know, know what you're paying, how much you're paying, and when to pay it. So we've also seen phenomenal growth in the installments uh, sort of segment, where there's a lot of solutions that exist in the market today uh, by some of the uh, large, large organizations that allow consumers and some of these experiences have been great and some have not been that great. But what Visa has been looking at is how do we build an ecosystem installment solution with our banking partners, with some fintechs, with what we call acquirers or merchant banks to basically allow a consumer to split their uh, purchases into installments. And what the solution would do is identify a consumer when they make a purchase, so the bank would have notified a visa, for example, that this consumer would have quali does qualify for installment. When we see the transaction, we would pick that up and then present an installment solution to the consumer. And they could select, yes, I want to proceed, or no, I don't want to proceed. And if they say yes, they could split that payments into three, six, 12 months uh, of payments. And then at the point of sale, or even on an online transaction, they've got the transparency around the terms and conditions, how much is the installment, when they're going to pay, how many times they're going to pay. So it actually makes uh, that whole experience for, for them shopping and making those large purchases transparent, but also seamless and a really great experience for them as well. That's how we wrap up today's conversation in this segment of Focus On. I want to thank my guest, Vinesh Ramnarayan, who is the Vice President for Product and Solutions within Sub-Saharan Africa at Visa for joining me. Until next time, it's a goodbye.